Howdy folks, I have spent more than 100 days in a row working on my dream garden tractor build. And now, well, I'm waiting on some better weather outside to finish up the paintwork. But spending that much time in the shop lately has got me thinking about shop things. I've always wanted to make a video or a video series about uncommon tools and handyman accessories that nobody ever tells you specifically you're gonna need in your shop. Things that you don't normally think about or maybe you haven't even seen some of these before. So with the help of some family members, I've assembled a completely random incomplete list of 20 shop tools that you didn't know you needed that I think might be helpful to my fellow tinkerers out there. Or if you happen to have everything on this list, maybe you can share some new ideas with the rest of us. Now, while this list may seem a bit unorganized, all the items do have something in common. I have used each one of these in some way on my dream garden tractor build. And in order to somehow categorize them, I've arranged the list from least to most expensive. Oh, and by the way, none of these are sponsored products. I have acquired or paid for all of these things on my own over the last 30 years of tinkering. So with that being said, let's take a look at my toolbox and around the shop to see if there's something you might find handy to have in yours. Dig DIY. The catalyst for this video was a dead battery. It's got nothing. No lights, no dinging, no dash. Completely dead which resulted in the discovery that our current battery charger wasn't doing its job. It was too smart, had too much computer. I came to learn that we had a need for something different, something that we didn't know we needed. This thing doesn't work at all. Maybe other folks don't know they need this either. Hey, but hey, 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 this is the wrong item to start our list. This is actually the most expensive thing on it. So I'll put this at the end. Let's start with something cheap and easy to find. Some might even consider this a pleasure to obtain, actually. One of my favorite repurposed household containers to take to the shop is the one gallon ice cream bucket. The versatility of this bucket was introduced to me by my father-in-law over 20 years ago. And since then, I've tried to maintain several of them on hand at all times. What makes this container superior to others in its class? Well, the handle, of course, second only to the fact that it has a lid too. But the best aspect of the ice cream bucket is the nature by which they are obtained. You're welcome. It might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how often a new sharp razor blade can come in handy. I always keep new ones on hand in my toolbox and most often I'm using them to remove something sticky or to cut a sharp fresh line into something. In many cases, they can be easier to work with than a standard razor knife. So that's why I always keep them as an option. I'm not sure what's the best way to get rid of them, though. I always seem to struggle with that. I'll bet most everyone has a Sharpie in a drawer nearby. But do you have a silver Sharpie? I didn't know that I needed one of these until I was gifted one to try with my metalworking projects. Most of the time, I find the Sharpie is quicker and easier to use than a chalk marker. Because it's always sharp, and it doesn't just wipe away. Just make sure you keep a spare on hand for when you ruin the one that is currently in use because dirty metal can make that happen quickly. For those fine lines where a Sharpie isn't sharp enough and a Phillips screwdriver just isn't pointy enough, having a good scribe or scratch all can save the day. Even if you're not into metal work, an awl can be a very handy tool for a variety of projects. Just remember not to carry this one in your back pocket. I put a price tag on this one, but it's easy to come by free Ziploc bags if you know where to look. We like to recycle and repurpose old bags and I've acquired many different sizes through the years. They are great for temporary storage solutions or to keep things organized. But maybe you didn't realize you could use a Ziploc bag to keep your paintbrush from drying out in between coats. With a handful of baggies and a black Sharpie, you could keep yourself busy in your workshop for an entire afternoon. My coworker Rob saw me using emery cloth in one of my most recent videos, and he had never seen it before, which was another catalyst for this video actually, because he thought it looked like something he'd find very useful. I've been working from the same roll of emery cloth in my toolbox for nearly 20 years, so it's likely something you won't need to buy very often, but you'll be glad you have it when the time is right. Perhaps there is no better example of not knowing you need something until you use them than rubber gloves. I was a skeptic early on because I thought of myself as one of those barehanded purists, but discovering how easy it is to work in these gloves 
has changed my mind. If you haven't adapted this practice, then do yourself a favor and give it a try on that next project where you'd rather not have to scrub your hands raw to get them truly clean. I've talked to some folks that scoff at the idea of needing a special tool to cut off zip ties. But that just tells me they've never had to reach into the hydraulic hose and wire-filled belly of a machine that is full of those little razor-bladed plastic zip tie cutoffs. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. If you want to be friendly to yourself or the next guy that has to work on something you've laced up with zip ties, then use a cutter that cuts them little weapons off flush with the clasp. Then you'll be less likely to need the box of band-aids you've got in your toolbox next to the zip ties. This is a very handy and often used tool that I didn't know I needed until I spent a summer working in a tool and die shop. A hand operated deburring tool is just like that zip tie cutter and helps to protect you and others against sharp edges and pointy leftovers from cutting and drilling. I use it on pipes and flat steel especially, but it's also handy on those PVC plumbing projects. Just grab it and give it a whirl. Here's another one that I had never heard of or used until I'd worked at that tool and die shop. The seasoned machinists wouldn't approve of any board holes that hadn't been properly chamfered with a countersink. This is one of those things that isn't always completely necessary to do, but it really separates the guys that pay attention to detail from those that just say good enough. If you're about details, then you should have a full set of countersinks in your toolbox. Here's another one that seems really obvious, but I always seem to forget that I was needing more of them when I'm at the hardware store. I've been using Visqueen and tarps all throughout many of my projects, and it's a great item to have on hand because you never know when you're going to need it. I'd recommend having several different size tarps on hand and a roll or two of Visqueen available at any given time because they can be particularly useful in a number of emergencies too. I couldn't believe that you could actually buy assorted wood blocks on Amazon, but this is one of those items that is easy to find for free if you know where to look. By the way, every item I will mention in this video, I've included links for in the description below, just in case you don't have access to assorted lumber like many of us do. But the number of uses you can find for random pieces of wood should go without saying. Pieces of 2x4, 4x4s, and even 6x6s are super handy to have in any shop for a number of obvious reasons, but don't forget to keep a stash of smaller pieces around for shims and protection of projects that are easily damaged. For example, if you happen to be repairing your boyhood trumpet to now be used by your granddaughter, you might discover that a small piece of wood combined with the perfect little C-clamp is just what you need to get that slide unstuck, which just happens to be the next item on the list of things you didn't know you needed. This is one of those items that's important to have a variety of. C-clamps are useful for many situations beyond repairing trumpets, and I've found that it's good to have a mix of all different kinds of clamps for different situations. Be sure to buy some good ones though, because the cheapies don't always hold tight, and you'll find that their best use is just hanging in the back somewhere for decoration. No, a hairdryer will not do the same thing as a heat gun. A true heat gun can severely burn you, unfortunately, but that's what you need sometimes to get the job done. And like many of my tools, I bought my heat gun used at a garage sale, and over the years it's become one of my tried and true favorites. I can't stress enough how useful this tool is, and just, you don't see it being given as a Christmas present often enough. So don't overlook it, and it's something that every young tinkerer will need eventually. You might think that a razor knife or even your pocket knife could do the job of a nice set of multi-cutters, but you would be wrong. I've had these same pairs since my early days of tinkership, and I don't think I've changed out the blade more than once or twice. I've cut all types of tubing, rubber, plastic, rope, leather, you name it, and these are the fastest and safest way to get a nice clean cut. Plus, it's kind of fun to easily cut through that stuff that Seems like it should be difficult to cut otherwise. Regular viewers of mine know how much I have professed my love for these furniture carts. If you've got a concrete floor in your workshop, then you owe it to yourself to start stacking anything heavy on these carts. 
and it will make life easier for you one way or another. I keep seasonal items on wheeled carts and anything else I'd like to easily move out of my way without using my back. I highly recommend them. They're lightweight and easy to store out of the way. I prefer the plastic sawhorses over the more heavy metal ones just because of the convenience and they're not as pinchy as the metal ones. Sawhorses are great for projects in the shop or in the house and the number of uses for having a portable work surface is infinite. I have four sets of sawhorses and sometimes still find myself needing more. So you should at least have one set because I might need to borrow them. This seems like an obvious accessory that probably everyone already has in their shop, but not all brooms are created equal. I'm talking about a really fine bristled push broom. Some of the cheaper brooms that you can buy have really coarse bristles and they just won't do a good job of cleaning up fine debris on a smooth concrete floor. If you splurge and get a really nice one, you'll find that you've been missing a lot of the little stuff on your work surface. And it will be so much more enjoyable to walk around on your floor without all that dust sticking to your shoes. And it's especially nice for those roller carts. I use wire brushes in my grinder and cordless drill all the time, but it wouldn't be fair for me to list a bunch of tools that you should buy if there wasn't at least one thing on this list that I didn't have myself. And that's a wire brush for a bench top grinder. Coupled with a good pair of safety glasses or a face shield, a bench top wire wheel can be your best friend if you've ever worked on anything rusty or you want to remove years of crud quickly and easily. I've been getting by without a wire brush on my bench top grinder, but if this tractor project has taught me anything, it's that life could be simpler if I had one. And finally, the one truly big ticket item that inspired the entire list of tools, even though you could argue it really doesn't belong with the rest, is this brand new old analog style battery charger. I and many others around me have discovered that the more modern smart chargers don't always get the job done. Oftentimes their computer will tell them that a battery can't be charged for whatever reason. And so they give up, they just quit, leaving you to think that you have a bad battery. But what I've found is that the old style chargers work better for batteries that are completely dead, but they can still be charged up and brought back to life. So this battery is charging now. It would not take a charge with that smart charge over there. Try the key and see if the lights come on. Oh yeah, it's already got juice. Okay, see if it'll start. Fixed it. That's proof in the pudding right there. The other charger wouldn't even attempt to, to start charging that battery and this old analog style charger did. So I'm thoroughly impressed. I'll leave a link in the description down below to that battery charger. I had to wait a year to get one. I actually ordered two of them, so I still got one new in the box. I think I'm going to keep it now, but. Okay. I got your son. This is what you need. I was bragging about my battery charger to Greg and he had said he wanted one. So since I had an extra, this is where it wound up. Now I know there are hundreds of items that could be on a list like this. I asked my dad, father-in-law, brother, and brother-in-law for their input. And I got so many suggestions from them that I couldn't share it all here, but it was fun to look over their list. So thanks a lot for that guys. And that's also why I'd like to invite you to share your favorite tools that you didn't know you needed with all of us down in the comments. And maybe I can make another one of these types of videos if enough people like it. Otherwise, thanks so much for clicking on this video. If I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one. You owe me 300 bucks. Dang. Do I gotta pay?